Thomas McKellar was a black man who migrated from Wilmington, North Carolina to Boston, Massachusetts, in hopes of finding a better life and new opportunity. McKellar became a muse for the artist John Singer Sargent, who transmuted Thomas McKellar into white gods and goddesses in his works. This film is both a creative interpretation and critique of our exhibition, Boston's Apollo, Thomas McKellar and John Singer Sargent. We asked local black and brown artists to respond to the following prompt. If Thomas McKellar were alive today, what would you say to him? To you, the viewer, we ask that you be prepared to be open, to create a space without interruption, to be present, and that after you have seen this film, you begin to challenge your own understanding of power, privilege, racism, classism, erasure, and agency. It has been said that art imitates life. We ask that you see these black and brown artists, their work and lived experiences as no longer an afterthought or background noise, but rather as important reflections of how far we have come and how further we must go. It's interesting that looking up or down are symbols sacred enough for prayer. There are 26 muscles in the neck, 10 pairs of two and two sets of three to be exact. Four of those muscles assist the neck in flexing the head upward and down. Prayer has always been a part of my story. Far, far down the sunset's view of my lineage lay ancestors who prayed to the sun, moon, and stars that I walked this very earth. At my birth, my parents prayed my passage to this place be ushered by love and grace, thrown into Bible study. Weekend retreats in Christian academies made me right for the pastor's seat. We bowed our heads at the dinner table and raise our hands at church on Sundays. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, belled from my lungs. As if my enslaved ancestry dripped the black church, a lit windowsill candle to guide the generations after them. And ain't that why we here in this place? Don't it look like a chapel? The stage, our altar? your bodies staining the pews with tension, internal questioning of why we are here together in congregation. Don't it feel like a church? Or maybe my poetry feel like sermon and all I want to do is be remembered. Let us bow our heads and forgive ourselves of the past, clear our gaudy conscience of the vice grip of yesterday and not waver to the consequences of forgetfulness. Don't Thomas McKellar deserve more from his people? So 
So, someone caught me spitting. <laughs> As my good friend beats were hitting, painting a moment vibrant. Someone asked if there was a cipher. And if I was a writer, but I couldn't stop sparking lighters. Couldn't tell him, bro, I don't rap. <laughs> Not ripping and gripping mics the way it looks off bad. It's just that there's a connection between my flashbacks and his visions. College courses, cold first floor apartments, porches, basements, parties, turn ice standards. I remember how we first started. It hit the ground running like an 808E stunt and flip with the times I laid on couches with insecurities in my heart. Each clap was me snapping, each snap of temper, each snap of back, each snap of mine, each snap back, tempo change, warp how my words weren't striking chord and now they're striking souls, twisted them inside out. How my producer can orchestrate the right mood music to bring you out like laundry. Have you ever had a beat produced just for you? And you couldn't put words to it. All you can do is give it emotion. Well, my freestyle is my way of giving him my emotion before tears are all I have left. To explain how proud I am of my brothers, to explain how vulnerable we had to be, to showcase how to move a soul, to inspire a body to move like no one is watching, to revolutionize a mouth to speak its truth, hitting beats and sparking lighters, can't stop, and won't stop, even if caught like some rappers. They say you died for our sins, were crucified to save us. You know they, the invisible phenomena governing all that be in us. Dark fragments of unfortunate circumstance, waiting for forgiveness to graciously be granted to us. Oh, what you've been through, white Jesus. Cross-built casket, Hands and feet nailed to wood, barbed crown, pedestal. What they didn't say is our black boys would die for sins. Crucified by those sworn to protect them, bullets in their back, spines cracked, no pedestal. No, in the name of dead black men, no murals of slain black boys at a table breaking bread. No chains around necks with faces of dead black men held every time a prayer is needed. Hey, hey white, white Jesus. Jesus. It's funny how you can look like me but can't look like me. How they'll describe me in your image yet reject my image. I mean, you know them. They use your tribulation for inspiration and for hope and hope. You don't search for anything deeper than faith values. I mean, how your story is a metaphor and how fragile is your faith. See, we've been crucified for saying your name. Carried crosses by the skin on our backs and on bended knees during civil rights and long before. Yet, we're memorialized for being docile, chiseled in obedience. How many ways can we kill off a little bit more of our faith? Dying while living our testimonies that our family will have to use as eulogy. Some never make to see your age. Fathers never meant to bury their daughters and mothers having to bury their sons. Hey, white, white Jesus. Jesus. They say give our life to you. That the Lord and Savior will grant passage for our souls through the gates of heaven. 
that you were murdered to save our eternal lives. But what's hope for life after death if death comes so soon to the people you were killed for? It's like we have a God complex, blindly devote our lives to the mission of you. But where's your commitment to changing those causing inhumane acts to the children you love? Why give you praise for the mediocre job you've been doing when punishment for failing is a death sentence for hell? Do you know the names of our fallen, your children? Beautiful creations with cascading adoration and faith, the black bodies made in your image. Do you like your image? Do other gods shame your pigment? by laws of our universe prevent you from ruling properly? Do the intergalactic law enforcement stop and frisk to check your god credentials? Do they shoot lasers first and ask questions later? You know what it's like to be us, disenfranchised, in danger of extinction, impervious to sympathy, immune to justice, convinced that you know what our prayers sound like. Hey, hey John, did, did you, you know, know that, that you're one of them, them too?
We gonna turn this face black. This is not a performance. We are here to claim this space in the name of Blackness and Thomas McKellar. We are here to call out these institutions that make us into hidden figures. We claim this space for all the past, present, and future Black artists. Justice for Breonna Taylor. Like I said, we claim this space in the name of Blackness and Thomas McKellar. I said, we claim this space in the name of Blackness and Thomas McKellar. In the name of Blackness and Thomas McKellar. We claim this space in the name of Blackness and Thomas McKellar. Give us some fuck.
What we have come you come to tell you here is our admiration and respect for you. We want to assure you of our love. The audience always sees the finished product. not the survival or the inner battle. And we don't often know the impact of our presence as black artists. As black art with people, we can calculate how we produce or move, how a certain word formed in a way or two, how a stroke tone on a perfect canvas can best capture a heart, inspire a crowd reaction that feeds our bellies, but it's with caution when our vulnerability is glorified. Our plight, our museum exhibit, our oppression ingested by a white gaze because they see strength in a masterpiece. Project a dehumanized fantasy, tragedies translated into hymns, an artist who illustrates pain vibrantly in a range of hues and not be tongue-tied when in reality, we've had to use tongue as weapon or been declared weapon spew tear-tearing words like paintballs and often leave a mess when we're lashing out because we've seen red when left on red or ignored. So when our art is bled and can't comprehend why our blues are given these bright yellow spotlights is because we didn't come here to be idolized. Just elegantly wanted to survive because racism in 2020 is performative activism perform as if your act isn't an ism like Boston playing Black Lives Matter billboards in Fenway the same day. A Nelson Mandela Roxbury love mural is torn down and they don't see me torn down as black man poet. Can't dysfunction like Kanye West when black poet hosting, black host now mentor. So I feel like painting positioned uncomfortably perfect on its display. How can I color myself more valuable when it's the polished work they pay for, they think? Don't feel the nights I've let the disc play, create a playlist and played a list of memories in my mind questioning why I hurt myself this way. Why I transitioned through life the wrong way, missing moments along the way. I can't glue together the broken nights as they seem to bleed into one another in my tunnel vision. They don't pay the cover for my tunnel vision unless the portrait is painted in blood gracefully. Is my death a better finished product? Is my last breath the last exhibit that they'll pay to listen to?
You have this, this amazing emotional roller coaster told by three men of color speaking about a man of color in 21st century experiences that I think will resonate with all audiences and I think challenge institutions to think about how to authentically engage artists in the process and be able to tell their interpretation. Sometimes when black folk do something and white folk like it, there just seems to be an extra little bit of glitter or an extra little bit more value to it. In this particular instance, it's, well, it's a black artist preaching to a white audience saying, well, what do I have to do to be valuable to you? Do I have to die? Do I have to, does my last breath need to be it? For me, it's about like, am I only gonna be remembered from my talents, from like me performing this thing that I am, which is black. Like, I'm a, I'm a black person, I'm not performing my blackness. Typically, these stages are saturated by the same things over and over, modern, contemporary ballet. So when we come up on the stage, we're like, this is what you're going to get, and we're going to tell our stories the way we want to tell them. We're not going to change our bodies to adapt, to have you view it in a way that you understand. We're not going to translate it for you anymore. You know, we're going to tell you the raw details through our bodies of our stories. 